my baby has fever the natural cooling mechanism in the body is something called sweating you get the the sweat comes to the surface if you're hot like you run a mile the, you you sweat the water comes to the surface it evaporates and the temperature cools down because evaporation removes a lot of heat from the body you can use this when your child has fever wet the body with tepid water it's like putting a layer of artificial sweat on the body and fanning the baby because my baby is vomiting vomiting and bringing up milk is considered a good sign tales and grandmothers folklore because it means the mother is producing enough milk because unless the stomach's full of milk how can you vomit it out my baby has blue spots all over her body right like an alien from I outer space Right. So, what would you say to the anti-vaxxers? And there are some people who are like, "I will not give vaccines." Well, I would. My one-word answer, really, educate yourself. Guys, welcome to Infinite Health. This episode is for the parents and by the parents. I'm just a medium where I've asked the top most questions asked by parents to Dr. Chandan Ray, who's one of the most renowned pediatricians in the country. He answers all your common baby care concerns. Go watch this podcast. Give me your feedback and your comments. Please subscribe to our channel and also join our community. Dr. Chandan Ray, welcome to Infinite Health. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. So, um, this format is basically, I'll say, my baby has something, and then you respond, right? So, the most common question that we got was, my baby has fever. Right. A baby having fever is an occasion will happen at least six to ten times a year. Mm -hmm. Fever is a basic biological response to something. You know, either you have an infection. It can occur in other things, but For practical purpose, it's infections most of the time. Right now, there are two aspects to do dealing with this. First of all, controlling the fever. For that, you'll have to control the fever with paracetamol, um, and there are also physical methods of controlling fever which people ignore. They're more focused on chemical methods. You know, give the medicine, this medicine, that medicine, but they're physical methods. What? Keep the baby in a cool area. Turn the te temperature of the AC down. Number two, uh, sponge the baby. So the natural cooling mechanism in the body is something called sweating. You get the the sweat comes to the surface. If you're hot, like you run a mile, the, you you sweat. The the water comes to the surface. It evaporates and the temperature cools down because evaporation removes a lot of heat from the body. Right. You can use this when your child has fever. You wet the body with tepid water. It's like putting a layer of artificial sweat on the body and fanning the baby. The temperature will automatically come down, and this is very important because sometimes on your paracetamol will take an hour to act. Mm -hmm. So, so sometimes in that period where the baby is in danger of having a high fever, it is it is something that is very easy to do. Some people like to wash the head, but that doesn't remove much heat. Because the water is contact with the head for a very limited amount of time, and uh, a lot of babies have a lot of hair, so that acts like an insulator. Right. A putty on the forehead is is very common, very filmy, but it doesn't really produce much decrease in temperature. Use the whole body and put a putty on the whole body, all the fleshy areas. Avoid the chest, front and back, but anywhere there's muscular areas, you know, the muscles and things like that, skin exposed, you just you just wet the body. Right. Give the baby something cold to drink. Common sense, you know. Uh, the water goes in at say fifteen degrees centigrade. Two hours later, the baby will pee it out at thirty-seven or thirty-eight degrees. Mm. A lot of heat will come out of the body. Fever is a biological response of the body. The body's immune system clears up viruses at a much more rapid rate at a higher temperature than it does at a lower temperature. Now the second portion of the problem, so uh, problem is what is the cause of the fever? Now that's most important. That could be typhoid, that could be malaria, that could be dengue. So that is the reason why you need to see a healthcare professional to find out the cause of the fever and deal with it. Because my second question is very related to the first one, and that is my baby has not gotten all the vaccinations done. Okay. Vaccinations are very important. Vaccines are not hundred percent effective. They, we know that, uh, but what it does, it gives you a reasonable, good amount of protection. So even if you get the infection, you will chances of you dying of that infection, having a serious illness requiring hospitalization, are really lowered. For example, the chickenpox vaccine. Uh, 
everyone knows after chicken pox vaccine, you can get uh, chicken pox. But that happens only if usually a family member has chicken pox. So the child is now exposed to a huge number of germs. Hmm. See, how can you get chicken pox? You get chicken pox by a casual contact in school. Maybe a hundred germs come in. But if a family member has herpes or chicken pox, your child is now exposed to maybe 10,000. Hmm. Just numbers. Uh, viruses. So obviously, you may turn out to have a milder disease. But the chances of you, you know, having a severe disease involving your brain, involving your lungs are lowered. The risk of death is low. That is why chickenpox vaccine is given. Chickenpox per se is not a very serious disease. It's an right. inconvenience. Hmm. But a small proportion of people do run into problems. Hmm. That is why the chickenpox vaccine is given. So all vaccines follow the same template. We know, we know from the COVID vaccine. The COVID vaccine did not guarantee that you wouldn't get COVID. What it did was that your severity will be less, your risk of hospitalization will be less, and more important, your risk of dying is less. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason why you vaccinate. Vaccines are not perfect. They're not supposed to be 100%. They may have side effects, but that is part of the price you pay for protection. So fever, pain, it's part of the price. You have to take that in your stride. Correct. But like, I have a very uh, interesting third question, which is my baby's cord has not fallen off. Oh, that you just have to give time. Have you ever seen anyone with the cord still attached? Right. You know, <laughs> uh, at 20 years. Oh no, what's that blue thing over there under your sari? No, it's a cord. It hasn't <laughs> fallen off. No, that doesn't happen. Okay, right. so it will fall off. Just be patient. Okay, there's another interesting one. My baby is still looking yellow. Babies after birth, they do look yellow. That's called jaundice. Mm -hmm. Now, that jaundice is something that we call physiological jaundice. When the baby's inside the uterus, the amount of oxygen is not that much. Babies, you know, we used to measure saturations in COVID. The saturations of a baby inside the uterus are about 60. Mm. When, when it comes out and starts to cry and inflate the lungs, the saturations jump to 96%, 98%. So what happens as a compensatory mechanism, babies produce a lot of hemoglobin when they're inside the tummy. Mm. Now, when they come out, they don't need so much hemoglobin. So it's broken down. During this broken breaking down process, the baby may look a bit yellow. Mm. That is harmless, but some babies, they have a little bit more than others. So the trick is to pick them up and make sure that they don't reach dangerous levels. So all babies before they leave hospital should have a jaundice level check and corrective action taken if necessary. That's very interesting because uh, I know someone whose baby was very dark when they were born for, and not yellow, like dark, dark. Okay. And like the color came back to normal. Like it was like a very beautiful looking, healthy skin color after a while. I mean, is that the same thing? Mm, I don't think so, really. It could be because it was a premature baby. It could be really, you know, the baby was exposed to light treatment mm. or something like that, and that could cause it. But the reverse is very common. My baby is born very fair, and now the baby is getting darker. <sighs> yes, your baby was born in a dark uterus, and now the baby is exposed to light. Naturally, there will be a darkening phenomenon. Right. I think this is something which is very common: is that my baby has a rash. Yeah, babies have very sensitive skins and they will have rashes. Most rashes are harmless. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is worrying is if the baby is unwell. Mm -hmm. A well baby with a rash in the baby baby period is usually not, not a concern. This is something we got a lot actually, that my baby has a green stool. Green stools are again normal. A baby has a very short gut intestine. Uh, as a result, the bile that comes out, uh, it, it comes out in a green color. Then the bacterial action changes it from green to yellow, uh, yellow and then to brown. Right. Adults classically have brown stool. A baby never has brown stool. Right. Babies only have yellow, mustard yellow or green. A green right. is a pretty normal color. If the stool right. is otherwise normal, not smelly, the child is other, otherwise well, you ignore it. Interesting. Because the second one, uh, this one is, I mean, pretty close to green stools that my baby is having loose stools. Again, babies, especially if they're breastfed, will have loose stools. Right. One of the differences between formula-fed babies and breastfed babies is breastfed babies have very loose stools. They're liquidy, they're soury smell, they have undigested curds. Whereas in the, in the formula-fed babies, they have more adult-like stools mm -hmm. and less frequent. Um, the next one that I have is my baby is vomiting. 
baby's vomit baby's puke i think uh, so many parents get so worried when their baby starts vomiting um like it just becomes like a panic like situation right. for okay them. so babies are born with you know you have your food tube called the esophagus it opens into the stomach the junction between the food tube and the stomach is a bit loose right so babies constantly bring out milk hmm. so that's why it's very important to burp them and some degree of milk will come out in fact the vomiting and bringing up milk is considered a good sign mm. old wives tales and grandmothers folklore because it means the mother is producing enough milk right because unless the stomach's full of milk how can you vomit it out so it's con- considered a good sign a shoop that sort of things my baby cries before passing urine it can happen because like anything which we want to expel anything out of the body there's certain muscles that have to contract to push it out mm. so in a baby when they pass before they pass stool and before they pass urine there are a lot of incoordinated contractions uh and as a result it can be painful no i think this is some this question is something that really surprised me is that my baby has enlarged breasts Yes they do because babies both male and female are are exposed to maternal hormones right and they they cause the the breast enlargement now that's not a problem the problem is the solution so japa maids and things will try to squeeze out the milk that will cause damage to the breast and maybe infection because if there's damage they usually bleed in and bleeding causes infection so don't touch them it will settle down by itself okay this one's interesting my baby is teething Yes, there are a lot of myths as a uh, around teething. Mm-hmm. The first two they drop from four to fourteen months. Now, lots of changes occur during that period, and people put two and two together and make five or six. Okay, <laughs> okay? so all teething does it produces teeth. But at this time, you know, the baby is more social. They start getting their first infection. They have loose stools because they've been fed. So everything is now put down to teething. Right, but. nice and this is something very very common okay and this is something i can resonate with because i hear a lot of people saying it my baby is not growing yes um my baby is not growing really is one of the commonest reasons but you know uh, the people come to see me but i see you have to have patience you have to concentrate on giving good nutrition because if the baby is not growing especially this period occurs usually after the first 6 months the first 6 months they grow very well after that there is a slowing of growth but i explained to you earlier that babies need a lot of calories and if you're not supplying those calories the baby is not going to grow so you have to look at ways to increase both the volume of the feed the baby is taking and also the calorie density right so that the baby gets more calories and as well continue to grow but saying that there are some children who don't grow their mm. faces they will have growth spurts they will not grow for a few months and then they suddenly grow maybe when they so, hit puberty yeah so the question is is my is my baby healthy if the baby is healthy growth is a natural corollary of that right okay my baby is not walking yes but uh, what is the age it's unrealistic to you yeah, expect a 9 month old baby to walk now the mother is probably influenced by some somebody in the family grandmother or somebody said oh your father used to walk at 7 months or <laughs> right. something like that you know totally hmm. unvouched for fact it doesn't happen like that what i do is i look at the sequence of events that has happened before now if the baby is being crawled in if the baby stands with support if the baby is holding on and cruising the baby will walk i can't tell you when the baby will walk but i can tell you the baby will walk. and what the is the way, average age for walking then the walk they can as, as some babies walk at um, um uh, 11 months some babies walk at 2 uh, years right so 2 okay, years yeah, also so there walk. is a wide range of normalcy hmm. so so you can't really say the, this is the age where the baby is going to walk but looking at the the cadence of events before you can say that all oh, right so the natural cadence is going to continue why should it not because the next question is very related to this my baby is not talking again talking you know same thing hmm. some babies talk a bit earlier some babies talk a little bit later you know and uh, the same thing the when i analyze it i have to look does the baby hear is the baby intelligent has the baby any swallowing difficulties hmm. if the answer to these three the questions are no then there's no reason why why the baby should not uh, right. talk 
And then if you analyze it further, the baby will be saying one or two words, repetitive syllables mm. and things like that. You just have to give time. Right. That's very interesting. I am coming to my last question now. And this is very interesting. And that is my baby has blue spots all over her body. Right. Like an alien from like outer space. Like an alien space. from outer space. Right. Okay, fine. No, wouldn't worry about that. Most of the time, these are called Mongolian spots. They're patches on the, on the buttocks, on the thighs, and they eventually go away. So it's not a really cause for concerns. Right. Um, Dr. Ray, thank you so much for this My Baby segment. This is a very unique segment that we've uh, had for the first time with any doctor. And I think it's a very good template for all the mothers and fathers and all the young parents who are trying to have babies to yeah. actually train them. Because, you know, personally, I feel that parents are not trained to be parents. Like in the sense that there is no schooling or there's no education where, you know, like they have to find out everything from the internet or going through the doctors once a while and they don't have templates. And I think these are so many questions answered in one podcast that I think this will be really valuable to them. But thank you so much for coming here and having this conversation. Thank you. It was a pleasure, really. Thank you. Thank you.